Hey everyone, back again. I wanted to do a uh, short segment here on uh, something I think a lot of people have picked up on, uh, and that is that I believe that the uh, radical uh, element of the progressive movement, particularly the social justice warriors, uh, the Black Lives Matter crowd, and all these uh, people, uh, I think that they are essentially guaranteeing a 2020 re-election for Donald Trump. They're doing a tremendous favor uh, to Donald Trump. And uh, let me explain why. Um, for the past year and a half, uh, we have seen the Democratic Party and, of course, their members, as well as uh, uh, the left-wing media, CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, and all the various uh, Internet-based uh, uh, news organizations. We've seen them uh, tell us that Donald Trump was crazy, that Donald Trump wasn't serious, that Donald Trump couldn't win, that he wouldn't win, uh, that uh, he was a rapist, that he's a Soviet agent, that he's, you know, all these things. All of which are, of course, untrue. But the uh, left, the media, and their supporters have spent an entire year and a half creating this false narrative. Now, as Trump moves forward in his presidency and people see that all these uh, accusations were untrue, uh, they will have lost credibility there. But they continue to do it day after day after day. They haven't stopped. I thought after the election, they would say, okay, well, that strategy did not succeed, so let's uh, get back to doing something that might succeed. But that hasn't happened. They continue to demonize Trump every single minute, every single day. Uh, it never ends. And it's not working. And it's not working uh, because Trump's basically doing what he said he would do. He hasn't really backed off everything he said he would do in the campaign. He's doing. Uh, he's only been, uh, had three working days, uh, really two working days, and he's already done some of the things he said he would do. Now, the reason that this is going to guarantee his reelection in 2020 is because Donald Trump now does not have to do a fantastic job. He does not have to deliver on nearly everything he said he would do. He only has to do a mediocre job. If he just does okay, he will get reelected. Because so much has been built up against him and so many things that weren't true have been said that they're all going to fall away. They're not going to matter. And so can, so it's not going to work a second time around. You know, you can keep beating, beating on him every day for the next four years. It, it's just it's water off a duck's back. Uh, because now he is the president and he is in a position to control the narrative a lot more than his adversaries. He has the big stick, he has the big megaphone, and he will use it. You can be assured of that. So all these things really uh, that have been going on uh, are almost guaranteeing that Donald Trump is going to be reelected, even if he only uh, has moderate success. And something else that's really helped him a lot is that the extreme left wing, the wing nuts of the Democratic Party, uh, who we saw on full display during the inauguration, probably uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of Democrats uh, were completely embarrassed by what they saw on the streets of Washington, D.C. And I imagine that uh, just regular folks, you know, Democrats living in the, in the Midwest, in the South, uh, in the center of the country, I imagine a lot of them, if they saw the Madonna speech threatening to blow up the White House, if they saw that disgusting, just absolutely disgusting, revolting speech that uh, Ashley Judd gave, those two things right there probably ran thousands and thousands and thousands of Democrats uh, who do not want to be associated with that. It just completely ran them you know, out of the party. And of course, independents are a huge factor. Independents make up 40% of the electorate now. By 2020, it will prob probably be even greater. And these people are not your hard and true Democrats who will hold their nose and uh, vote for Democrats anyway. These are people who will vote for a Republican, sometimes will vote for a Democrat, and they typically, uh, in, in, in a uh, re-election uh, for a president's second term, as long as that president has done even a mediocre job, they will re vote to re-elect him. So, um, the, and these... Uh, the, the identity politics, the social justice warriors, the Black Lives Matter, these radical left-wing Fruit Loops who apparently, uh, they may not be the majority in the party, in fact they certainly are not, but they are getting the most ink 
They're getting the most views on YouTube videos because people are watching it just to check out the complete insanity and uh, looniness of these people. They're killing uh, the uh, Democratic Party. And you don't see them being called out by their own party. Uh, the uh, left-wing media seems pretty happy to cover them. I'm not sure exactly what's going on in their mind, but I think to the average sane, reasonable Democrat or independent, when you see this, uh, the, the types of things that, that they're doing, uh, what we saw in the uh, protest during the inauguration, when you, when you have people like Madonna and Ashley Judd saying the things that they said and, and, and getting millions and millions of people who uh, actually saw that, Many of them are Democrats and independents. Uh, I can assure you that uh, that uh, that was revolting to them uh, as well. And so this is why the social justice warriors are all probably de facto going to reelect Donald Trump in 2020 uh, because people are just not going to want to be associated with that crowd. And again, because the left, uh, the media and the Democrats and, and what have you, have spent an entire year and a half, and they'll continue for the for the for the entire four years of his presidency. They will continue uh, their their assaults and attacks. And what this has really done is it's actually lowered the bar for Donald Trump. <clears throat> Best strategy for the Democrats would have been to take Donald Trump's promises and his words and all the things he promised, and to really hone in on them things, and then to hold him to account on each and every one of those items right on down the line. That's what I would do if I were a democratic strategist. But they've done just the complete opposite. They've assaulted him and beat him up to the point and tried to discredit him to the point where uh, he's coming into office with, with, uh, with fairly low ratings, lower than a new president would normally have because of all these attacks. But they have driven the bar down so low that people have such low expectations uh, of, of what Trump can accomplish that when he actually accomplishes even uh, a, a small or even a per percentage of what he said he would do, or even if he only has a medi mediocre amount of success in his presidency, he's almost guaranteed re-election because he will have done better than what was expected. He will have overachieved. It's not hard to overachieve when the bar has been set so low. And that's exactly what's what's happened. And Donald Trump is going to be the beneficiary of that in 2020. As long as he doesn't make any major, major mistake. Uh, and uh, I think that the, the, the area he has to be very, very, very careful of uh, is in the area of foreign policy. We all know that the Israeli lobby is the most powerful lobby in Washington, D.C. We all know that they have an Israeli first policy. We know the uh, the amount of power they carry, the amount of uh, impact that they can have on foreign policy and if you uh, whether Republican or a Democrat if you get uh, sucked into the uh, the uh, Israeli uh, uh, effect is what I call it, the Israeli effect the effect that they can have if you get sucked into uh, spending too much of your time trying to um, uh, move forward with the the Israeli agenda on foreign policy. If you put too much effort into that, uh, they will get you in a lot of trouble, because what they want, uh, particularly the Netanyahu government, what they want, they want uh, the government in uh, Syria ov overturned. They want the war in Iran. They want more wars, more governments overthrown, uh, more regime change. This is what they're going to be pushing for. Um, and uh, they'll use every bit of political pressure they have to make that happen. And so getting sucked into uh, this uh, Israeli um, um, foreign policy is a very, very dangerous thing. And so Donald Trump is going to have to be very careful because he has a good relationship with Netanyahu. He definitely is a very, very strong supporter of Israel, which is fine. Uh, I have no problem with that. But uh, you have to be very careful that you do not get sucked in uh, like uh, Bush did, because let's face it, the foreign policy agenda that Bush uh, 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 sought to uh, uh, to carry out was really the Israeli foreign policy agenda. Uh, they really don't care about American politicians, uh, their success or failure. I don't think they care much about uh, America. Uh, I really think that they are uh, 
totally concerned with their own agenda and particularly their foreign policy goals. And based on uh, what Donald Trump has stated in his uh, in his campaign, that he has kind of a non-interventionist view of the Middle East, uh, which is the correct position, he is going to be uh, pulled into a completely different direction by the powerful forces of the Israeli lobby, and particularly in the area of foreign policy. It is a it is a minefield. It is a minefield, and you will get blown up if you walk into that minefield. So Donald Trump's going to have to be very, very careful uh, with that. I know he wants to be pro-Israel, and I know he's a friend of Netanyahu, but he better, better be very careful uh, and not get himself sucked in to the same uh, black hole of, uh, of uh, regime change in the Middle East that George Bush did. Uh, it's very hard to get out of that once you're in it. So that's the area I see where he has uh, the possibility to, uh, to take a big fall. Uh, I think if he just focuses on his domestic agenda, trade, jobs, taxes, securing the border, and these things, he will be wildly successful and will, uh, and will do extremely well and will walk right into re-election uh, and uh, probably win re-election very easily. So uh, that's just kind of how I see it. But I do believe that the social justice warriors and the liberal media, by the constant attacks that have gone on and will continue to go on, continue to drive the bar down so low that it makes it very easy for Donald Trump to appear successful. Uh, like I say, he can do a mediocre job and win re-election just because the bar has been brought down so low. So uh, thank you to the social justice warriors. Thank you to MSNBC, CNN, New York Times. Thank you to the uh, progressive uh, um, news sites on the internet. Uh, thank you all. Please continue to beat up on Donald Trump every day. Please continue the narrative. Uh, please continue doing all that. This is absolutely fantastic for those of us uh, who are uh, looking forward to Donald Trump being reelected in 2020. We're counting on you. Don't stop the attacks. Uh, 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 continue to tie him to Russia. Say he's a Russian spy. Call him the orange man. Uh, call him a racist, a bigot, a misogynist, a homophobe. Continue all these things. It's all very good. It all works perfectly into a strategy, a winning strategy for re-election in 2020. Thanks, y'all. Oh, if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can share it with your friends on social media. You can subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll never I'll never hammer you with advertisements, okay? Something I've never really mentioned, but I don't, I don't run ads on my videos, mainly because I hate watching videos with ads popping up. I hate that. Um, so um, I'll never put ads on my videos. It's a promise I'm making now, and uh, I'm going to stick with it. I'll never run ads on my videos. All right? You guys uh, have a good day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.